welcome to this episode of Guitar Dudes. I'm John, and my co-host is always... Brian. B. Ryan. B. Ryan. B. Train. <laughs> the B. Train. So last episode, we talked about drugs and rock and roll in the classic rock movement, kind of where it began. And today, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about Brian's favorite topic. We're going to carve out a little section in the drugs and rock and roll period. So the classic rock period was from the early to mid 60s up and going into the 80s so mm -hmm. we're going to talk about a very specific period from the we'll say the late 80s going into the 90s and that is grunge grunge yeah. rock so for those of you who don't know what grunge rock Brian, why don't you kind of break down what is grunge uh rock? i don't know i think if you ask the you know your ask pretty much anybody you know what just what is a grunge band you know they'll tell right. you pearl jam nirvana sound garden and uh and those were yeah those were a lot of the the more successful grunge bands um mm -hmm. although there were a ton that um that uh weren't as successful um commercially but yeah uh, did you find you run across their records later and it's they still have that seattle sound and mm -hmm. you know and really the the seattle sound is a uh, you know what john we're gonna have to pause a second okay. <laughs> hang on and we're back. Um, slight pause there. Um, John will probably edit some things, but uh, yeah, right. As we started off with technical errors and now I'm getting Amazon deliveries uh, as soon as we hit record. But yeah, we were talking about grunge and what grunge, I mean, uh -huh. it, it was, you know, and it wasn't so much as a genre of music, although it kind of turned into it. Mm -hmm. It was really a uh, kind of a subculture. Yeah. Uh, grunge was, there was a there was a record company up here, a record label called sub pop. Um, and if you look at a lot of the early grunge records, you'll see sub pop on the, on the uh, liner notes or whatever. And that's, mm -hmm. that was the label. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of bands, you know, like I said, sort of Nirvana, Pearl Jam, all of those guys, um, especially Nirvana sub pop was really big and, and they really kind of got Nirvana on the radio and, and got them going. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was kind of a subculture. I mean, if you, you know, if I could turn the camera to, to the window outside, I mean, it's, I live up near Seattle and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Olympia and uh, it, it, it's, it's dark, it's cold, it's rainy, gloomy right now. Uh, the summers are great, but the other nine months of the year, are, uh, <laughs> you see where grunge comes from, you know, yeah. so you mix, you mix in the, the misty gray, dark weather with uh bunch of heroin you got grunge <laughs> I can't. and that's the recipe the two ingredients rain and heroin and there you go <laughs> you know and this really is a great time to be filming this because here in waco texas we're having the exact same weather it's 47 it's rainy yeah. it's gloomy it's nasty yeah and i uh just just to kind of show you where i guess the weather and heroin comes in so I pulled up a couple lyrics, you know, you mentioned the big three, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, uh, you know, and here's an Alice in Chains. Here's another, I guess you called them the big four, but mm -hmm. this is a song called Wood. Know me broken by my master, teach thee on child, love hereafter, into the flood again, same old trip, hmm, same old trip yeah. it was back then, so I mm -hmm. made a big mistake try to see it once my way. Yeah. And then um, I also pulled up another one. And if you notice that Kurt Cobain, this, the next one comes from Nirvana. If you notice that Kurt Cobain loves to talk about the human anatomy, and this comes from Heart Shaped Box, and I think you'll, you'll really see that. Meat eating orchids, forgive no one just yet. Cut myself on angel hair and baby's breath. Broken hymen of your highness, I'm left black. Throw down your biblical news so I can climb right back. That's dark and deep, man. Yeah. So the the lyrics were uh, the lyrics really kind of describe the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you uh, kind of walk around Seattle and, and there's a lot of it's a dark town. You know, yeah. it's kind of like Gotham City. Uh, I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. the homeless, the the drug use, the um, I mean, all of that pain and all of that is kind of 
and, and you know, and add in the backdrop of clouds and mm -hmm. rain and everything else. Um, you know, you, you can definitely see where it where it comes from, and yeah. and even uh, grunge was also a. I mean, it was a fashion deal. I mean, we all had yeah. docks and and uh, band T-shirts, plaid uh, flannels and stuff. Yeah. Well, the flannels, you know, up here in the Pacific Northwest, it's a big logging industry. You okay. know, so that's where you get you know the, the, kind of looking like a logger with the boots yeah. and the well, that's what these loggers look like. You know, and <laughs> that's it. So you're really you're dressing like a logger, but it, no, but it was a whole. Uh, I mean, I was I'm guilty of it too. I mean, it was a whole fashion scene. It was a whole um and i think we're grunge i don't know in a way for the music industry i think it was a breath of fresh air because yeah. they i mean we'd had classic rock bands like aerosmith slowing down you know they kind of saw their peak and they were kind of slowing down yeah well then you had hair metal which was great dude yeah it was great but i mean how, how much hair metal hair metal can you really listen to you know like scorpion scorpions and and, and everything is so yeah. intense you know yeah. and, and and men wearing makeup and and uh i think of neon, you know you know like in the 80s neon right neon uh, yeah, yeah. cross-dressing i mean the whole thing <laughs> yeah uh and really and i love i love uh hair metal i mean i loved a lot of the you know the wild guitar solos and, and things like that yeah but man i think uh, we were kind of ready as, uh, you know, the world was kind of ready, I think, to uh, to hear something different. Or some, and I think grunge kind of struck a chord because a lot of the, uh, I mean, a lot of the songs are so easy to play, you know. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like, yeah. it sounds like kids, you know, you know, just yeah. strumming chords on their the side of their beds in their mm -hmm. bedrooms, you know, um, and even that that opening riff to "Smells Like Teen Spirit." I yeah. mean, it's it's such a simple riff, but it's an easy song, yeah. But that's the kind of riff that guys like you and me that were middle school. I mean, that's the mm -hmm. kind of stuff we were playing. That's the oh, kind yeah. of riffs we were coming up. Like we could have easily yeah. come up with that riff, or um, and it wasn't a mind blowing riff, but it was uh it was a familiar it it sounded familiar so it struck a chord i think with a younger generation of people and uh it, and it just gave us something to uh to listen to you know and it, it gave us yeah. something to kind of identify with and uh and yeah. man yeah how many bands came out in the 90s though i mean it kind of on the coat on the coattails of uh you know nirvana and bands yeah. like that my i mean you had gosh screaming trees you had uh radiohead i mean all these yeah and then you know california which is close to washington i mean a lot of those bands started kind of coming in so you started getting some of that california sound a band uh called the exes e-x-i-e-s i remember them yeah they came to waco did they really uh, yeah I, I went and saw them and i was like I'd never seen anything like it before. Here they come yeah. out and they're all glammed out and <laughs> leopard print and sunglasses, but they just rocked, you know? And yeah. And then you, of course you got post grunge and all of that. And, mm. but uh, grunge uh, to me, yeah. I mean, it was, uh, uh, I don't know. It was, to me, it was as powerful as the sixties. You know what I mean? It's like, it wasn't just a genre of music. It was a period in time. I mean, it was a, would you call it a counterculture movement like yeah. the 60s for the baby boomers were for our generation, Gen Xers? That was the 90s. That was grunge. Would you say that those? Yeah, totally. Together? Okay. Yeah, because I mean, you were, uh, I mean, look at the way people dressed in the 60s. You know, you had the love beads and the, oh, yeah. and all of that. And, and we did the same thing with the docks and everything. And a lot of those styles are still around today. Yeah. And I think a lot of the bands today are still trying to cash in on that, you know, but I don't know. You're not going to play it like Nirvana, Soundgarden. And I saw Soundgarden a couple years before Chris died. Uh, really? I saw him here in Washington. They were amazing. I mean, they, I'd never heard a, a concert that loud and <laughs> it, his voice just cuts through. Yeah. I mean, anything. And it, they're just as good live as they are on the record. And, oh, uh, I bet. And then just seeing them in Seattle, it was like on a misty, rainy night. I mean, it was, you know, my wife used to, uh, 
when she was uh, in high school and stuff, the Soundgarden used to play. They were playing where I live now in Olympia at a lot of their mm-hmm. high school parties and whatnot. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so it's crazy. It's uh, there's a history behind it for sure. It it really is, and you know when you mentioned, um, you know how the sound kind of changed a little. To me, and let's take Alice in Chains. When mm-hmm. Lane Staley died, you know there was that period. Uh, it was what ninety three or ninety four when he died. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something and, like that. And then Alice in Chains tried to make this comeback. Mm-hmm. You know they got a new lead singer, which. To me, you know, Jerry and Jerry Cantrell, the uh, guitarist in this, I, I, I can't even tell you what the new guy is, but it's, it's like a, it's like Alice in Chains 2.0. I mean, it sounds mm-hmm. good, but it's not, yeah. it's not the Alice in Chains, not Lane Staley. Yeah. It's not the lead singer. Yeah. Robert Duvall. That's, that's his it. name. That's it. And, and he's a, he does a great job in and of his own. And I think mm-hmm. it's taken a few records for them to kind of, you know, kind of give him the give him the spotlight give him let him be the quarterback um because i mean i couldn't imagine coming in you you you're filling in for lane staley sure. i mean you can't nobody can sing like he can right I mean, he just had a that unique voice and um but you know you see some live stuff and and uh, he does a good job i mean he keeps up uh he can do you know man in the box uh wood all these songs and yeah he, he nails them it is not lane but I, I'll take him over, over anything. And, and Jerry Cantrell, I mean, they're, they're a guitar player. I mean, he's, you know, he's incredible. And, and they're, nobody sounds like their band. Like no one, right. as soon as that first three seconds kick, I mean, you know, it's an Alice in Chains song. Oh yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, they were just kind of pioneers. And I think, I don't know, like I said, I think the music world needed, needed grunge and they needed bands like that to, to kind of shake things up, you know, and I think that that's yeah. kind of where we're at. And I'm sure we'll do an episode, maybe, maybe next time, where it seems like nowadays music just needs to be shaken up. We mm-hmm. don't, we, we don't have this counterculture, or we haven't had a counterculture movement really since grunge. And I think that that's why it's yeah. so important to talk about grunge and something else. And I know this is drugs and rock and roll, but we really want to lay out the groundwork so you understand the importance of grunge. So now let's go and interject the drug side of (laughs) grunge, which is very, it's very easy to do. And and I remember it was a while back that you said that Allison Chain's album Dirt. So once again, these are, these are bands that you need to look up. Allison Chain's, if you've never heard them before, Allison Chain's Nirvana, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, but going back to uh, Mm -hmm. Allison Chain's album Dirt, which is one of my favorites. You said that that album should have come yeah. with a needle. It should have. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's dark. It's, yeah. um, in the instrumentation, like I said, I mean, even if without even lyrics, I mean, just mm-hmm. the guitars, the bass, everything was real dark and it, uh, yeah. I mean, it, even the, and if you remember MTV, like Headbangers Ball, oh, yeah. I mean, those videos were like horror movies. I mean, they, they were, were so dark, Yeah. but you know, uh, I was watching a special this morning, a, a new special on uh, addiction uh, in Seattle, um, or just kind of the Seattle's just kind of been on a decline, uh, last few years. Just, well, I mean, Seattle's been on a decline as the the drug use has been on an incline. So yeah. it kind of goes because yeah. they've just about decriminalized it up there. And it's really, yeah. And, and big cities, uh, you know, big cities are notorious for drug use anyway, mm-hmm. but uh, in Seattle, it's, it's very, very prominent. I mean, there's people walking up and down the sidewalks that are just tweaking out, you know, no wow. idea where they are. And, and, and even if you don't do drugs, I mean, even if you're, Uh, And a lot of these guys didn't, I mean, a lot of them weren't drug users, you know, but you you can't really be in Seattle, you know, you can't walk down the street without experiencing that world, that life. Um, Again, the darkness, the, you know, it's all kind of goes into your mind. And, and, uh, and again, I think that mixed with uh, guys playing, you know, crappy instruments and, (laughs) and, uh, and and like I said, Dave Grohl, uh, singer for the Foo Fighters, you know, he was Nirvana's drummer for you kids that 
don't know that that were born in the 2000s uh i mean he said once that you know all nirvana was was just a band playing uh or a bunch of kids with crappy instruments writing yeah. some crappy songs yeah. and they got famous. Uh, yeah. Like they're looking, they listen to Nirvana's first album, Bleach. It's raw. It's, I mean, but it's, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's all it was. I mean, it, I mean, and a lot of these bands got very good. I mean, Kim Thiel, the, the guitar player for Soundgarden, mm-hmm. uh, he's incredible. I mean, his, yeah. um, but I mean the the roots of grunge. I mean it's it's not complicated. You know it's right. stuff that, like I said, it's we could play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like our our higher crappy high school bands <laughs> could cover some Nirvana. So, I mean it, and that's what we would do. You know bands I'd be in if we'd run out of stuff, we could just start covering. You know let's do Teen Spirit or let's, you know whatever. Yeah. Come as you are. I mean it's they were. They were so you know, easy. And, you could play it on a yeah. crappy guitar. It would sound good, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know. I mean, yeah, so you're right. So we've had, you know, grunge. We could probably hit on post-grunge. We'll do a post-grunge episode. Yeah, post-grunge That would be cool. Metal. Yeah. Post-grunge. Yeah. And uh, what I've discovered, and I can't wait for this episode, is the uh, uh, international, like, London death metal scene. that <laughs> Swedish swedish Scandinavian yeah man it's um uh and also different types of world music and stuff that that yeah. uh we should check out so uh yeah but that's i that's know how it is so that's yeah. grunge that's grunge in a nutshell so once again we recommend for those of you who have never heard of grunge check out bands like nirvana alice in chains Soundgarden. Pearl Jam, and as you mentioned, uh, California bands like Stone Temple Pilots. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and they weren't so much a, I mean, they, they were one of the perfect example, a band that kind of came along. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, 90s, it was, uh, there's a lot to see here. Yeah. At least I listen to those bands and uh, then you'll branch out and you'll hear other stuff. It, it's a big. Uh, it's a big genre that people really huge. Don't think about. I mean. Like I said, we just named the big four or five if you count STP, yeah. and you could just go on uh, Spotify and just type in grunge or yeah. not, or '90s rock or '90s grunge yep. and just experience it. What mm-hmm. amazing what amazing music that it was and what kind of a counterculture. Yeah, it and was. and it's also worth and I'll keep it quick. Uh, it's a uh, the life it breathed into other genres like industrial. Yeah. Um, stuff like uh, Nine Inch Nails, Ministry, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and Punk, even uh, Green Day, Fugazi, um, Rancid, Sublime, yeah. um, stuff like that. Because it's yeah. as, and it gave MTV, it gave video a big kind of a shot in the rear, you know. And, and yeah. uh, so as people were listening to Nirvana, they'd start listening to Nine Inch Nails too. Yeah. That's a different genre. Well, then they're going to go listen to some ministry and then, you know, then maybe even some punk. So it, it, it really did the root of grunge really did kind of, kind of branch out into a, into just a. Just, just like classic rock carried us through 30 years of music from the sixties to the eighties. Well, I mean, um, really grunge kind of did the same thing. It carried us for the next 20 or 30 years. So now we're just kind of waiting to see what's, what's next. But, um, in, in, in a nutshell, how would you sum up grunge? Like in a sentence or so, how would you just sum up grunge life changing or what? Uh, I would say just soggy, you know, <laughs> soggy. There you go. Cause, cause that's how, it, you know, that's how you feel when you come in from a walk. Like when we're finished here, I'm going to go walk my dog. I'm going to be kind of soggy when I get back yes, in. Yes, you will. Yeah. I'm going to be kind of cold. I mean, that's, you know. But it changes yeah, it is. you. It makes you want to get warm after that. It does. It totally does. So, yeah. you know. You know there you go well don't forget to like and subscribe comment below if you have any questions if you want to know more about grunge you can ask brian and i you can follow me on instagram at john three music you can follow brian on instagram at brian clarity i'll have the links below 
We'll see you next time. Good afternoon. Later. Later.